Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother and Dad. Love Ruth, John, Mark, Pamela, and Patricia. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Parents, 1961, Part 129. Uh, this is the first part of the based on the first part of the original cu- publication, Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC Number 53, published on November 3rd, 2000. And there is a letter from the editor of the SFMC. Yours truly, Peter J. Ray. Hello, everybody. And so our saga continues as we move through the early 1960s, 1961 to be particular. Here are some of the highlights of this extraordinary issue. When I was crying one day, Patty said, Why don't you call your mother and ask her to come? You left behind a broken-hearted baby. I don't think Peter has smiled since you left. He's quite pitiful. A real love affair with his grandma. A week ago, we took Peter to the beach, and he ate some sand. He threw up for several days. John just got $150 worth of fireplace equipment. I've had some more bad spells, but try not to think. Try to keep myself turned off. The Duff's little girl, Marion, stayed here, so she and Patty are up in in bed giggling and having a fine time. Pam and Patty have been by themselves constantly since we returned from Mittawanga and, and playing so well together. Mark was over at the Gregory's next to Rocky River Park and got too close to the edge of the hill on a bicycle and fell all the way down to the beach. They brought him home all dirty and bleeding. He looks like a wounded soldier. Mark had his stitches out yesterday but not, not all healed yet. Just lucky we have him. Mrs. Vogler drove us to the airport. I thanked her and she said, Thank you for having four children for me to look after. So, that ought to whet your SFMC appetite if it needed wetting, but it probably didn't because these issues are so entertaining and historical. The summer of 1961. Ruth and John were settling into 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard and the great house debate appeared to be dying down. Ruth was adjusting to the new big house and fewer children in the neighborhood. Peter had his first birthday. John his 37th birthday and Pam turned 7. Patty had her 4th birthday and Mark was closing in on age 9. John F. Kennedy was President of the United States. Grandma Smallshaw finally came for a visit and she and Peter bonded like you wouldn't believe. That was the beginning of a beautiful relationship and Peter went into mourning when when his grandmother returned to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Ruth had Ruth and John had many visitors that summer of 1961, including Harold and Marge Freilich, John's cousin and their family, and also Chris and Ken Field and their boys, Ruth's, Ruth's aunt. Ruth and John flew with Anne and Wayne Duff to Europe, specifically Ireland, Scotland, England, and Paris, France. Mrs. Vogler cared for the four children in their absence. Peter learned to walk and bonded with Mrs. Vogler. Mark had a near-fatal accident when he fell down a cliff over the Gregory's by Rocky River Park, and he had only been shortly recovered from a severe ear and lung condition. And so it goes. Best wishes, dear family. Love, Peter J. Ray, SFMC Editor. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, May 7th, 1961. Dearest Mother, I just finished ironing the lovely little pink dress. Such a wonderful lot of work on it. At first I was sorry it wasn't silk for Sunday school, since Patty doesn't wear dresses much else, but wonders. Pamela can wear it. It looks just fine on her. The style is a little young, but she is so weary of her dresses, so she will wear it to school tomorrow and look very nice. Then we can shorten it for Patty later on. It's such nice material and so much work on it. It almost seems inconceivable that so much time could be spent on something like that. Maybe when I'm a grandma. Have you thought any more about coming? Would you like me to invite Aunt Olive up for a weekend while you're here so you two could see each other also? 
It's hard to believe Peter will be one year old this week. It's such a pity not to have enjoyed his first winter with him. Incredible, in fact. What would Norma like for a gift? Love, Ruth, John, Mark, Pamela, Patty, and Peter. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, Thursday, June 1, 1961. Editor's note. Now, Ruth's mother did come to visit yeah, but after the last letter. Dearest Mother, I just felt so badly all night the night you left to think of you up all night. Just not worth it. I wish so much we'd made other arrangements. I kept waking up and looking at the clock and thinking, Oh, poor Mother. And even the next morning, John would say, And Grandma isn't home yet. Your poor aching back. I was tired and I was in bed. I do hope you went straight to bed and didn't get sick. As your plane left, Patty said, Isn't your mother going to come back? And when I was crying one day, she said, Why don't you call your mother and ask her to come? Patty has been an angel since you left. I I think she was fighting for attention. But you left behind a broken-hearted baby. I don't think Peter has smiled since you left. He's just cried almost constantly. Of course, he's been sick too and only wants to be held. My poor aching back. Peter even crawled halfway upstairs the morning after you left. We think looking for you. He cries in the night too. He keeps looking for earrings on me and searches my face. Broken hearted is the word. He's quite pitiful. A real love affair with his grandma. We did appreciate your visit so much and wish you were still here. We just hope it wasn't too hard on you. It was so good having you here and loving the children. We had the board dinner for 15 last night up until 2 o'clock the night before getting ready, ironing the tablecloth and until 2 o'clock doing the dishes. And it was hard to get ready with Peter and late tonight, so I'm tired. I do hope you're all right. So very sorry. I'm so very sorry that it turned out to be such a strenuous trip for you. We were all thinking of you. I'm sorry I was so hard on you too. The weather turned quite warm today and it's raining tonight. Both Peter's eyes are matted from his cold. I do hope you didn't get it. I must say good night and do let us know how you got along. Pamela was so disappointed that you didn't take her bird and eggs. Mark had Jeff a premium over for Memorial Day, and John took them to get tadpoles, and we had a picnic at the park, and Jeff A. is coming tomorrow night and staying overnight. Tell Bud to let us know their plans. We would love to see them. Good night and take care. We all love you. Love John, Ruth, Mark, Pamela, Patty, and Peter John. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard. Rocky River, Ohio, June 18th, 1961. Dearest Mother and Dad, Bud just left tonight and we certainly enjoyed seeing him. Of course, he was involved in all the birthday doings again. Yesterday, Pam had 14 children for a party and today they all went to church and then Grandma and Grandpa and Carol, Dave, Kathy and Lisa came for a party and dinner and we all went to the park. It was a gorgeous weekend. I'm very glad that you got over your trip okay, the flying and so forth. I'm sorry your other trip was so hot, 4,000 miles. Maybe you should have stopped over night and done it in two days. We had a busy weekend too. We had a cocktail party to go to and the inaugural ball until 2.30 a.m. a week ago Friday. Pamela also went to a birthday party and Mark went to an overnight camp. Then we went to Oberlin for John's 15th college reunion dinner at the Oberlin Inn with Ann and Wayne Duff until 1.30 a.m. Saturday and back down Sunday for dinner with the children and John's college mates at the dormitory. Then back to the Sunday school picnic. John won a ham, which we had today. Then we went to the airport to see Grandma Zook off for California and a tremendous jet seats about 140 people. We missed seeing her as she was already on the airplane. Then we went to Dick and Jones for dessert. 
Then I had the installation dinner Thursday at the Sahara. Very lovely. Tomorrow the children start swimming lessons at 9 o'clock, so I'll be driving them there every morning for three weeks. Then Mark goes to the Junior Museum at 1.30 to 4.30, so I'll be driving him there. It was good to see you and Bud. Good night. Love, Ruth and John, Mark, Pam, Patty, and Peter. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, June 22nd, 1961. Dearest Mother, I'm so sorry my last letter was so late. I had not realized how much time flies by. We're all well, and we enjoyed Bud's visit very much. It was so nice that you enjoyed Elizabeth's visit, and hope you had a good trip back. The children go to swimming lessons in the swimming pool at 9 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m., so it's quite cool that early. I hope they stay well. Then Mark goes to the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center in the afternoons, 1.30 to 4.30. I alternate driving every other day. Iola came today. We cut two large vases of roses, one for Mrs. Diamond next door and one for Iola. The roses are huge and so lovely and in such profusion. I have them all over the house also. I wish I, I, wish I could give you a bouquet. Please tell Bud we enjoyed his note and enjoyed seeing him. John has been in court for four days, a lurid divorce trial. And from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock at a United World Federalist planning session, he was supposed to go back down tonight but was too tired. He's taken his clothes into his friend Don McQuilkin's house as they're going to a golf outing tomorrow afternoon and evening poker, I expect. John's folks and Carol and family were over Sunday. The folks are on vacation. We brought Carol and the girls to the, to the zoo one day and into the pop concert last night. They've invited us for dinner Sunday. How is Laurel Ranford and is she still in Regina? Night, night. Love, Ruth. P.S. The movies and slides are good. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, July 9th, 1961. Dearest Mother, The time really flies by, doesn't it? We were so glad to hear that Bud enjoyed his visit. We enjoyed having him, and I feel so fortunate that his business brings him our way. Otherwise, we wouldn't have such a regular visit. I'm sure they enjoyed their trip to Waska Sioux. I gather the kitties didn't get their diseases. We're all fine, although you know Peter hasn't been the same since your visit. He was so good, but then he got that cold and seemed so heartbroken. A week ago, we took him to the beach, and he ate some sand. He threw up for several days and had diarrhea, but is okay now. We've had Harold and Marge Freilich and their children with us for four days. It was so nice to have them here. All the children slept up on the third floor, even Patty, and they got along just fine. Iola called after she was here last and said her legs were bothering her for four days after she came here, and she found these stairs too steep and too much for her, so she isn't coming anymore. She said it had been nice knowing me, so I had to do my own cleaning. I took one of my pills. We took Marge and Harold to the Contiki, also took them and Debbie to Music Carnival, a summer musical in a huge tent with the stage in the middle. We also took them to lunch at Captain Frank's, a seafood place on the pier where we left for the Rocky R- the Cuyahoga River cruise, and then we took them all on a bo- boat trip up the river by the steel mills and under all the bridges and down through the flats. We used the leaf and the table for the first time, too, for dinner. Saturday night, we took them to a party in Shaker Heights. What a house! It was one of those huge homes on South Park Boulevard that we've shown you. 18200 South Park. Great huge pillars, circular staircase, mirrored dining table, huge chandelier, eight bedrooms with private baths, even the bathroom wall-to-wall carpeting was monogrammed. We went swimming in their private pool, heated at 82 degrees. The bathhouse was the kind of home home I'd like. A large room with sliding glass doors facing the swimming pool and a fireplace. And then there were shower and dressing rooms on each side for men and women. 
The house was so huge you got tired walking through it. It had two kitchens. They also had a similar home in Florida. All through the house there were pictures of them taken with President Kennedy, Mrs. Roosevelt, Peter Lawford, Bob Hope, Dorothy L'Amour, all sorts of movie stars. He owns racetracks. They also had a framed article of being received by the Pope. It was quite an experience and wish you could have seen it, so elaborate. Yesterday we had John's mother and dad, Carol and Dave, Kathy and Lisa, Dick, Joan and Mike, Ted and Evelyn, and of course Harold and Marge and children for dinner and supper. I fixed a ham and potatoes au gratin, and John's mother fixed a relish tray and half a watermelon filled with fruit. Joan made bread, and Carol and, Eve- Carol and Evelyn brought cakes. They seemed to have a good time and even played bridge on the porch while Ted and Harold argued about investments. Harold has cleared about $25,000 on the stock market, and Ted says it's going to go down. I'm going to write to Chris and Pat and Ruth and see if they'd like to visit us also. We're going to a beach in August, I think after Mark is through his camp. They got along fine in swimming. Pam was promoted ahead of Mark. At the Junior Museum, they take nature hikes, collect butterflies, do clay modeling, and learn about birds and Indians. They, they can both float on their back and swim on their fronts with their heads in the water. We were out to see a builder about houses and had another decorator in today about drapes. He thinks the walls should be papered in a gold, $224. John just got $150 worth of fireplace equipment. The decorator wants to take out the mantle and the mirrors in the dining room and the radiator and replace the sectional in John's chair. I drive tomorrow to the Junior Museum and have promised to take Patty to the swimming pool. I am tired, so good, good night. Please tell Bud about the house. He'll remember the area, for we drove him around by those houses once. Take care of yourself. Good night. Love, Ruth. P.S. I've had some more bad spells, but try not to think. I try to keep myself turned off. 20689 Beach Cliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, July 17th, 1961. Dearest Mother, thank you for the nice gifts for the kitties. Candy, shorts, PJs. Pamela's shorties look so nice on her, and she's worn them a lot, and Patty is so proud of her short like Pam's and wore it right away today, too. We got a call from Chris today, and they can come either this weekend or the following on their way back from Washington. So I suggested a week from Saturday as we're having a couple for bridge. John was at his investment and poker meeting tonight, so I took the kiddies to the park for a picnic. Yesterday we went to Cedar Point. They have it looking quite a lot like Disneyland. We also went swimming. Pam is a real, really the daredevil. Jumps off John's shoulders and somersaults in the water. Then we went to John's mother's home for a lovely supper. Carol and Dave and their family were there too, so we had a nice day. On the way there, we went to a couple of beaches to see what was available for cottages if we decided to go in August. Wayne Duff's dad died of cancer last week, so we'll have to see what their plans are regarding Ireland. His dad had an operation on his larynx, had it removed a couple of years ago, but then the cancer spread. Joyce had another another colored cleaning woman call me, and she's coming Thursday, but she doesn't sound as nice as Iola, and only works till 2.30, but we'll see. Thanks again for remembering our babies. Peter is as cute as ever and shy to everyone. Love, Ruth. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history if this interests you. Finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, photographs, family movies and videos, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made, excuse me, 702 history videos in seven areas. World history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation, excuse me, so we can continue making these videos. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, 
families and are looking for a high school, you might consider, excuse me, again, Russ Lust Educational Center. Russ Lust is located on Allenby Street, not far from the corner of P. Guevara and Wilson Street in Barangay Metuna, San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines. At Russ Lust, we specialize in helping young people who have had difficulty in the larger traditional high schools. We're more than a school where we are a warm, supportive community, and we strive to be creative and innovative so the students enjoy going to school and develop a love of learning. And the, the, the website is restlust.education, R-E-S-A-L-E-S-T. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.